We're back. <laughs> this Happy is the BD best day. This is the best day of February. It's a Valentine's Day, as you could tell. <laughs> Linda's in red, I'm in hearts. Welcome, welcome. Um, we're happy that you've taken out time to join us. We're very happy and grateful for that. And for newbies that kind of stumbled across us, or if it's your first time listening, you want to know, people are curious, what's B.O.B., <laughs> Bob, Beacons of Balance? It's about living in balance. It's about, we're trying to bring these topics and themes and discussions, and we extrapolate from professionals out there. Um, their words of wisdom on how to balance this chaotic world that we're in. So we could have our best lives ever. We could be in joy, love, inner peace. Because as I always say, if you have inner peace, guess what? You have it all because you're not worried. You're not thinking about things. So thank you for joining us. And we are on every Wednesday and we have themes for the month. So this month, because it's the month of love, it's about relationships. And this particular episode is going to be about friendships, what friendships mean. 61% of adults in the U.S. say having close friends is essential to having a fulfilling life. And that's more than those who cite it marriage, children, or money. So that's friendships are key. And what defines a good friendship is mutual respect, trust, empathy, support also honesty and being a good listener you know rather yeah. than, and then go on um linda with there's other eight things as far as friendship the first being non-judgmental non-judgmental you are oh, an open book goes beyond words and peeping into the depths of your heart and i i was lucky in my life to have some really good friends i still have and a good laugh helps too by the way Supportive, they pray for your success, trustworthy, you can rely on them to accept you without conditions. Great listeners, always there for you, and vice versa. This isn't about you. And helping nature give you mental peace by understanding your needs. A good friend makes you feel lighter and happy. Also being a good communicator, they'll keep in uh, touch with you. Um, it's very rare that they will hold grudges or let misunderstandings creep into the friendship. And also um, a good, like you said, a good sense of humor. It helps not to take yourself so seriously, you know, being able to <laughs> laugh at yourself and with them. Right. Encouraging an innate quality and seeing the best for you. And then forgiving, has a forgiving nature and, you know, does not hold grudges. And the last thing I wrote on here, and we're going to go back and talk about all this, is the line is, remember to have a friend you need to be a friend. It's like, you know, we're wells of energy. You just can't take and, you know, fill your well. I always say it's like the infinity symbol, you know, the number eight, the infinity. Right. Because as you're giving, you're receiving back. It's like- a, a And you can pretty back. well tell right away. I've had people, mostly but people I've known for years, and you'll notice they're like psychic vampires. They drain you. And, and being a, a psychic myself, I've often wondered where my friends, friends, because they want me or because of my gift. You know what I'm saying? So I've always had that problem. That's an interesting point because I brought that up with somebody in my family that happens to be successful. And, you know, and the, I think for that type of person, you kind of wonder, like you're saying, are they around you and want you for what you could do for them and bring you or whatever? Or are they there because they, they're truly there for you? Right. And uh, being that you and I both know very successful people, I can tell it's, it, it's very hard for them to open up or be around people that they always have to be cautious. I guess maybe that's human nature too. They think because, you know, that they know you and you're, you have this like friendship, which it's a different type of, it's more like acquaintance type of thing. But I know when I had my business in that for 10 years, people would come in and, and they kind of befriend him. And then I, I always used to wonder, oh, I wonder if they really want to be friends or if they, right. you know, right. I'm saying? you start to analyze that and you go, oh, I'll tell you. And I think it's easier maybe for females to have more bonding and closeness with, with females, you know, to, to have that. And I don't know, well, there is a difference they say between the male and female brain, because women, we have to talk, right? They say, how many words do women do versus men? <laughs> say men could say five and we say a thousand. <laughs> and it's true. One day, my husband, he said to me, 
wow, he goes, he, he wasn't, he goes, I really, it wasn't envy. He said, I really kind of admire, he said, how you have your friends and you could talk to them. He said, then you get off the phone and like two hours later, you're talking again and you talk another half. He goes, what the heck? That's me. <laughs> yeah. But they, but men don't have that, you know? He I know. Some of my closest friends are actually men. Yeah, I'm I've had more friends with men than I am with women. Yeah. And that could cause a little, little tiff in a relationship. I do too. And yeah. my husband, he's good about it, but he has females. He has females too, because he's a musician. And let me tell you when he plays and he has that wonderful personality and they, well, they've been groupies, you know, they hang on them, you know? And I'm like, especially in the beginning when we were just going out, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's fine you know i think that's good you know it doesn't yeah i think it's important for men to have friends a lot of men do, i'll ask people so what does your husband do you know what does he do for fun if he's not with you well doesn't he have any friends you know well his brother will come over okay men need to and you know there's a lot of women that don't want their man to have friends. i was just going to say that even though we could have ours, a lot of times they don't want them. And doesn't that happen with family though, too? When, when a woman, don't you, you know, what happens is uh, a lot of times, say the male, the yeah, Mary's a female, that female wants them for their family and they don't want the guys. Oh, to I've read bothered. so many mother in law They don't want to be bothered I've read, with. I've read so many of them, women who are, are heartbroken because they choose the wife's family over them, but that's kind of how it's always been. And I, I see that. I could see it in, in my own uh, uh, family stuff too. You know, I always come from the heart and I always say, I love you. When I'm talking to anybody on the phone, I love you. You know, when I just yeah. started, when I started going out with my husband, you know, we just started. So when we get off the phone and I was going to, Oh, I'll see. Yeah. We'll talk. Okay. I, I, and I had to stop myself because how do you do in the very beginning? Say, I love you. So I remember I said to him, he thought I was nuts. I said, listen, I'm going to say something, but it doesn't mean like, I love, love you. I'm just saying, I'm wishing you well. And from my heart to yours, I love you. I want the best, you know, but don't think it's that I'm throwing something at. So he laughs about that. But a funny thing, I came in the other night, I was walking through the kitchen. He's on the phone. He is on the phone with one of his mu musician guys and they kind of talk, right? He got off the phone and I heard him say, love you. And I came in, he gets off the phone and I go, did you just say love you to, you know, and he goes, and he stopped and he goes, oh my, he's so used to it when he's on the he phone with me. He just said it. But anyways, friendships are, um, I take my friendships to heart and um, the past, I think, cause like everything, everything's changing out there. And we went through the COVID and stuff like that. And um I lost a couple, not lost them to death, but I, I ended a couple of friendships. You know what? They say that, that with this last president, that a lot of families got broken up in friendships because it's not medium. It's this or that. I've read so many people that no longer have Thanksgiving with their family or their sons or because of the way, although lately, I've been hearing from a lot of my clients saying, you'll never believe it. My son just called and said he's done with the ex-president. Yeah. But you know what? You know, when we talk about everything energetically, why give that so much power and energy that it causes, you know what I mean? That it causes that to happen. That's yeah. My, I have a friend and he was talking to his sister and she saw our show and she was very, you know, and you better tell her she's be she better look out, you know. And it's like, why is it people who are drawn to that energy, to that negative energy, are always threatening violence? They're in that cesspool. That? They're in that cesspool, you know. It's easier for people to be with others that are in a cesspool. You know, you could be, you could be. It depends what you want to turn around with, you know. Um, right. But it's true. Going back to, you know, you were talking about being successful and stuff. When people move up the ladder and you become successful, you have less friends. You have oh, less wow. True, you have less true, like we were talking, you have less true friends that are truly <laughs> happy for you. Even though you may be in whatever situation rising above them, 
they're happy for you and they still stay with you because the general populace likes to be in the cesspool. Everybody likes to be in misery. Yeah. Misery loves company. I always say, you know, my friends got me through, you know, of course, going through divorces and, you know, closing a business, all of that stuff. If it wasn't, you know, I didn't need therapy. My friends were my therapists. You know, that we supported, you know, we support each other. We listen, you know, sometimes you can have little tips in that, but it wouldn't be anything, you know, and I think that's good also. Sometimes you have to say, no, I don't agree with you. Or I think, you know, blah, 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 whatever, you know, there was another friendship I had that really, uh, the person started change. I say, you know, we're like crystals. We have all facets, you know, like a, a crystal have facets. And sometimes people only show a certain side that you know them as, and then right. all of a sudden it shifts and you see and you go holy crap but you know that could happen in a um, partnership relationship that you're with somebody look at people that have been married for so many years and they don't well you know say one of them are gay they didn't know it they truly no. didn't know it that's happened a lot or they they were raised in the time that they felt like they should be ashamed well, yeah, and that's not a judgment, uh, but they don't know. So they're living a lie. They're living underneath, and you don't you don't know. You truly. So do we truly know in heart? Do we truly know anybody? But um, right. I think friendships are are cultivated, and they're really needed because I feel you know if we were supposed to be on this planet, this little blue marble I call it, by ourselves, then we'd be out on an island floating around by ourselves, right? Right. I mean, we're here collectively for, there's a reason we're here collectively. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So to, you get along enough, but you know, that one friendship that, you know what, what ended it too, which I think is this ended it too, right here. Oh, that's what not, <laughs> the phone texting. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times, and I don't know if this has happened to you, things are missed in a text. Oh yes. That's the interpretation. Like you'll, you'll be saying something and the person takes it a different way. I would be the one to take it a different way because before cancer and, and my healing and stuff, I would be very, you know, what do you mean by that kind of energy? But the texting, it could lose, you could lose the content and stuff like yeah. that. So it's, it's important to be aware of it. And, you know, like that saying is, if you want a friend, you have to be a friend. You have to cultivate. It. It's like anything. You have to grow the garden. You know, exactly. are you there just for that? And I've had, you know, um, I had like an older friend. She would say to me, well, how come you haven't called me? You know, I'll call her and I'll say, so I said, well, you know what? The phone works both ways. <laughs> exactly. What does she say? You know, why do I have to be the only one to do, you know, to make the call or whatever? And sometimes that happens. It becomes a codependent thing. But it's interesting with it. it I take friendships to heart. So, um I don't know. And if you observe people that don't have friends, it's kind of like a lonely existence. It's like they're just existing. But there are people that do just fine. I mean, they really, there's some people, I hate to say it, but at my old age now, I I enjoy my downtime without having to talk to anyone. I enjoy just being quiet. You talk a lot though. I mean, you talk a lot yeah. because of what you do. So that's a natural, you know, when I had jobs, like, you know, one job I worked as a, a headhunter. So I was on the phone, you know, you're on the phone all day and you're talking to companies, you're talking, you're interviewing people. I would come home and I'd be like, don't, <laughs> I don't want to talk at all. You get on overload, but um, it's wonderful to have good friendships. I have, I have friendships that I've had for 50, 60 years. Wow. So they've seen me through. <laughs> all my relation, dating, relationships, divorce, business, you know what I'm saying? Everything. And uh, it's going to, and a lot of them, you know, I'm not in touch with like all the time. Right. But they're cool whenever you contact them. And now we've gotten older. Sometimes we forget our birth, not that we forget the birthday, but we forget exactly what day or whatever. We used to do birthday cards. We, we, we've gotten away from that too, but we call and it's like, we're there. We're there on a dime. We're there. What do you need? I'm here. Fill me in. And it's like, we don't miss a beat. Right. You start off where you draw. Yeah. That's very valuable. That's a gift. I feel, um, I feel sad for people that don't have, um, I know, like you said, people could be alone too, which, yeah, I, I understand that you could be alone. And I understand what you're saying. Getting older, I've shifted into a different, different format. And I feel like I'm housebound now in a lot of ways, but I'm enjoying right. it. 
It's hard, especially it's hard with um, male female relationships for a guy to say. I think it's harder for a guy to say they're sorry. And one of mine that was really it wasn't a good relationship. I finally what I got around to is I'm sorry for my part. That yeah. was so I'm just sharing that with everybody. If you can't get somebody, your your partner, whomever to say they're sorry, just talk to them when you're quieted down and say, you know, it takes two to tango with everything. So there is a part that we each play. So if you acknowledge, I'm sorry, even if you feel it wasn't yours, but if you say, I'm sorry for my part, let them at least acknowledge that they're sorry for their part. Once a person starts doing that, I think then it triggers something and they could acknowledge when they do do something that they're more to blame to or whatever, you know, right, right. but you know, it's a good thing to show, um, to cultivate friendships and to show your children what a friendship looks like and everything too. So they have it. My sister and I, we, she's kind of my touchstone, you know, that's so great. I see that. With I you. have a sister it. that I get along yeah, with. Yeah. Yeah. That's by the I, way, she told me to tell you hi. Oh, tell her I said hi to her. She's a sweet. I love her just like I, you. She's and, got a great sense of humor and smart as a whip. Yeah. I, I like her a lot. And, uh, but now I'm going to say this saddens me because I have only one sister. And you guys don't have that kind of connection. It's not, not everybody does. I should say it's gone through different phases in life. You know, when our kids were, her last one was, close to my son's age, you know? So we used to do family, you know, go to like amusement parks with them and go away, you know, things like that. We do stuff like that. And I would talk to her. So we were a little bit closer then, but as we've gotten older than that and you think it would be different, but it's not. And I don't understand it. And I've tried to reach out and, but it's like, she's cutting everybody out too. She's in a, a sad, sad place. And I just have to, you know, I have to honor that. It's, it's what it is, right? How about the bumps in the road with friendships? How do you work through it? Just by being honest? Yeah, honesty. Identifying how much the relationship means to you and how you like to see it. Honesty is the best thing. I had someone I I thought I think was a friend, but I got so angry, you know, back in my, in my day before this, I mean, if you mess with me, I can get vengeful which is sad to say, because all, what you should do is, like you said, walk away. I was on the same page with you, honey. I would be able to slice and dice somebody with, my, with the, I always say this is more powerful than nuclear weapons. Oh, let me there. tell you, I, I could turn into, it probably shock this person, like, what? She's really a witch. Yeah. But I would just call things out and, oh. Yeah. I could be pretty ugly if you messed with me. Well, there you go. We have our dark and we have our light. So, you know, once we wake up, you know, you woke up, I woke up. Once you wake up, you don't go. You, you can't it doesn't go. It doesn't matter anymore. No. Nope. And as you said. But it did you, matter that I probably hurt this person because I was so angry. Did you? So, so what happened? What happened? Ne- we'd never know. I don't talk is to it, this person. Is a person still in the same area? I no, mean, this person lives in a different country. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I used to, you know, I facilitated a lot of different groups. I've taken a lot of different works. Yeah, I'm certified. I always say I'm certifiable, certified in a lot of different things. I used to hold um, like a circle or with women to let go, to release things. And so, as you know, with healing work too, sometimes you don't have to be with the person like this right on them. Right. Or physically with them. A lot of times distance healing Yes. She's even more intense than when that's just like when you do your prayers, right? Because you're right. not physically with the person who's writing in or what you're, but you're sending that out and it's, it's more intensified. Well, I've done the prayers and, and, and I, you know, I used to have dreams about this falling out before it even happened. It was weird. I guess it was meant to be. But the thing is for you, cause bringing it up to, to heal it, you could, um, sit in it, either put a chair in front of you and call that person in and start dialoguing. And, you know, you could go back to exactly what occurred and what you think was faulted on their part, yours, whatever. And then you come to a place of letting it go and forgiveness and letting it go. And that'd be an interesting, you should try that just to see what would happen. You never know out of the blue, you may hear from her. And then you could also write a letter you know, put it in letter form. Then burn it. And you could burn it. And it's the energetic thing. And uh, a friend of mine just did that with her son. 
Uh-huh. You know, they have volatile, they go up and down and everything. And she felt very upset by it. And she's getting older. And I said, well, you know, so I, I explained the same thing to her. So she wrote a letter and I said, you know, you really, if you don't want to, you don't have to send it. You just energetically. Well, guess what? He contacted her before. She did mail the letter. He contacted her before the letter got there. It sounds to people out there, I'm sure it sounds like, woohoo, these, these two are nuts, but it really does work. And all you could do is try it to see what happens, but it does work. Yeah. It works. And that's about manifesting whatever we want. Friendships are important and they're very dear to my heart. And I'm wishing all you guys out there a happy V day, happy Valentine's day in your heart. Just love your heart. Oh, you know, some, I had another uh, mentor who, you know, when you're going through, excuse me, when you're going through crazy stuff, you know, be it whatever it is and you're out of sorts, she would say, just take one hand here and then your other hand here. And it's like, basically like the hand of God and you're holding it. And you just go steady, steady, steady. You just breathe and just let it be. And it really, it kind of brings you to a place, you know? Awesome. It's very important. I always say, you know, get out of this space, your head space, and drop down into your heart space. You know, when you come from here, when you come from here, and I think I said before, the first message I ever got was, um, love is the key to unlock all the mysteries in life. It's very simple. It's a very simple thing. I think I said before, the things are simple to do, but we make them so complicated. Right. It's just like right. going to somebody that does energy and healing work, because I do it, you know, and I used to do it freely at my shop. I used to have an arch and I'd sit people there and I would just run energy. Let me tell you the stories I had. I had one guy came, he came in with his wife, you know, men didn't want to come in that type of shop. There was a cafe. So they came in. So his arm was like this. And I said, oh, I said, I know you had something done. You know, I said, I'm offering, it's free. I'm, you know, if you would like to sit, you know, just calm down and, uh, and uh, it was all heated up, you know, and I ran the energy in that. Well, then I moved from that location to my big location. It was like, I don't know, maybe a couple months later, right? I was in the midst of moving. So it was an open house and I'm, I'm in the corner and this couple comes over and the guy comes over, he goes, Hey, he goes, Hey, you, I go, what? You know, like what? And he takes his arm and he's going like this. He goes, look at, I didn't know who he was. He said, you worked on me. He said, I had rotator cuff surgery and they told me I wasn't going to be able to move and I was going to be limited. And he goes, look at this. He said, and I, I go, I'm just conduit. If it came through, I'm so happy. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So it, it does, it does work. Yeah. So from our heart. Oh, go ahead, Linda. Say yours. Be the change you want. Be the change you want to see. Yes. And from our hearts to yours, always in total love joy, peace, inner peace, balance. If you have inner peace, you have it all. Thank you so much for watching, listening. Please subscribe down below, spread the word. Linda's will be out there. We have all our, <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> People are on podcasts can't see what you're doing. <laughs> you have to watch, but um, yeah, spread the word. And uh, we're on every Wednesday. So We'll be having another one next Wednesday. And then the last Wednesday of the month, we have a doctor coming on, Dr. Love. Awesome. <laughs> Love All you right, guys. Love friend. you, honey. See you next week. See you next week. Bye. Cheers.